Good evening. Good evening. And uh, thanks for coming. And thanks for uh, coming through the cold weather tonight. And uh, on this great property, <coughs> finding the right door. <laughs> uh, on the back side of a Super Bowl and a, look like an endless uh, winter that has befallen us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a great task for us. As I go around the country uh, doing uh, speeches on leadership, uh, at universities or with uh, management and CEOs uh, from around the country, it, I like to remind people that every generation has a great challenge. And it's not by their choice that we become victims of circumstances with challenges that challenge us as human beings. Uh, in a couple of years, we'll start celebrating uh, World War I. The celebration will start in about four years. The 100 year anniversary of World War I. Followed 30 some years later by people who raised us, grandparents, who witnessed World War II. And literally, those two generations, when they finished school, or if they wasn't in school and they were of age, many of the young men in Louisiana during World War II had the largest part of its population of any state serving the war. There would be buses and trains waiting, uh, normally at the end of the week, to take them off to prepare for those two great wars. That was uh, that generation. Generation since then, uh, I've experienced a Vietnam. And I'm sure we might have some Vietnam veterans here tonight. Where are you? Vietnam veterans there. Welcome home. <laughs> Around that same time, we, we unified the nation with a promise that had been made uh, one nation under God, freedom for all, <clears throat> with the Civil Rights Act. That generation did its part. That was what they were facing. This generation today, when I go around the country again, and a story from New Orleans, a while I, we started to form a, a, a Green Army. Uh, at the end of one of these sessions, of a group of uh, volunteers who spend their life work trying to work on the environment, a young man stood up and said, I would do more on the environment if I didn't have to worry about my college debt. To him, that is the challenge of this generation. And I reminded him, going back through the history of this country, when people said, give me liberty or give me death. And here's he whining about his college money that he owes. We got to disconnect on what that means. And that each generation has a challenge. I do believe the Vietnam next generation, the generation we're going to leave in charge, uh, their big challenge will be the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, there's an expiration date on clean water in Louisiana. There is an expiration date on clean drinking water in Louisiana. We will have less tomorrow than we had today. And this is because of acts of men, of greed, <coughs> and a failed democracy. A democracy that put the flag of all the gas companies over our capital, <laughs> over their constitutional responsibility to look out for the welfare of the people. In that regard, our democracy is failing us. I don't say that with any pride, I say it with a sadness in my heart. Because I spent 37 years, three months, and three days wearing the cloth of this nation as a soldier. 
to come back to my home state and to see corporations working with total disregard, with collaboration and support of elected officials to do things that tell the people of Louisiana that oil field wastewater is not hazardous. These are elected officials in the state of Louisiana who will stand up and defend this industry. Now look, I got here tonight with gasoline in my tank and oil in my engine. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what I want it. I don't want to beat me on a crawfish pond. I don't want to smell it when I go out duck hunting. And when I go out and catch some sacrally, I don't want them to smell that oil. They do not have the right. And every day this group practices psychological operation on us. And what they tell us, oh Lord, don't say nothing about the oil and gas company. If you do, they're going to leave. And oh my Lord, what's going to happen to our economy? What's going to happen? This is psychological operations. We have been blessed in Louisiana. New York was given to be the financial center of our nation and of the world in many regards. Our blessing was this natural resource that God just happened to have come out, out of the ground and be a blessing to us as a, as a state. That's our blessing. We must protect that blessing. And for over 80 years, ruthless uh, industrialists, many of them not even from Louisiana, collaborating with our own politicians, have created some of the weakest laws in 1973, President of the United States Nixon signed the Clean Water Act. From the day it was signed, the Louisiana delegation repeatedly, and I can tell you names that uh, go down in the history of Louisiana as great leaders, have been a part of that national government in the Congress of both houses trying to weaken the Clean Water Act. And they look at the Clean Water Act. We said we will protect our, our drinking water as an enemy of the state of Louisiana. Our rules on clean water in Louisiana are so weak that Alabama ships its oil field fracking water to Louisiana to dispose of it. Because Alabama won't allow them to put it in the ground in Alabama. That is a condition that has been created in our state of Louisiana. And I say that after learning this as a great, great blow to my morale. What I try to tell the legislator is, look, the things that we've got to fix to include the 6,000 abandoned wells. Those conditions were created before you were born. And I've told the governor's people that to tell him. The laws we've got to fix were put in place before they were born. We've got to fix them now because we cannot move forward with 6,000 abandoned wells in the state of